Podcasts are like the new radio shows, and one of my personal favorites is the Tizzy and Wayne Coffee Show. Tizzy and Wayne report on and interview a variety of indie creators from musicians to authors to artists. This is the perfect show to listen to when you're sipping your morning coffee. Subscribe to the Tizzy and Wayne Coffee Show, available on all major platforms. What's in a name? The Bard asked that question during the course of Romeo and Juliet. Most people in the modern world don't think of it unless it's trendy or sounds cool. But names have power and meaning. In ancient mythology, you could magically command someone if you knew their true name. Of course, in storytelling, they can give your character the makings of a great character arc. Hi, I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and for the final Creator's Corner, writing tip of Season 3, we are talking about character names. Hey, happy Saturday, everybody. Here we are at the final creator's corner of the season. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button right there underneath the video to make sure that you are able to get notified about all of my future videos, which includes the Author Showcase next week and Author Awareness August all next month. If you're wanting to be a channel supporter, there are a few ways for you to do that. I'm on Patreon, I've got merchandise on Teespring, and of course, there's YouTube, which is always the easiest. And that's where I'm needing the most help. I'm looking to boost my subscribers on that platform, and as a way of saying thank you, I'm giving away this free and autographed poster featuring the cover art for all four of my books. All you have to do is register at the link down in the description box, and then share the crap out of my channel and my videos. I'll announce a winner when I hit 200 YouTube subscribers. I'm also giving away 20 promo codes good for a free download of my audiobook on Audible. The book is a collection of poems that I wrote called The Lover, The Fighter, and The Philosopher. Now if you want one of these promo codes, the first 20 new patrons on Patreon will be given one of these codes. It's that simple. Lastly, I have two big announcements. First. I'm looking at opening up my top 10 list videos for season four to authors I've already interviewed and worked with, and I'm inviting you guys to do a guest spot by providing your top 10 book recommendations. I need lists covered for November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. I've already got October covered, and I'll be following up with the third installment of my top 10 audiobook recommendations next July. Second, I want to make sure that you guys are aware that next Saturday is the Hanford, California 130th anniversary. And if you're in the Central Valley, I'll be at the Hanford branch of the Kings County Public Library from 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Myself and six other authors will be situated in the children's reading room, signing and selling copies of our books. So we're talking names, and while that might not seem all that important, it's one of the first things that you need to know for your character development. It's important to consider because you don't want to just randomly name a character because you think it looks cool. I'm speaking from experience as a teacher who has encountered students with ironic first names. I mean, I've met plenty of students named Precious who are anything but, and I've met at least one kid named Royal who, well, let's just say he was no Prince, and that's Prince the title, not Prince the musician, although he wasn't much of a musician either. 
A character name is one of the first things I develop when I'm in character creation mode because I want something suitable for the character. In fact, on most RPG character sheets, it's one of the first things you'll fill in about a character. Sometimes I might change the name to something more suitable, but I still develop it first because personally I believe that names are important for developing a character because the name tells you a lot about them or can at least be a lie about them. Don't believe me? J.K. Rowling was incredibly specific about the names she picked for her characters. Many characters in the House of Black are named after stars. Sirius, for example, is especially named after the brightest star in the constellation Canis Major, and it's dubbed the Dog Star. And of course, it's because he's an animagus that transforms into a big black dog. Hagrid's first name is Rubius, which is derived from the Latin for red-faced, an indication of his jovial personality, his temper when he's defending his loved ones, and the blush he gets when he feels embarrassed. While Tom Marvolo Riddle was an anagram for I am Lord Voldemort, the name itself was a puzzle of sorts, and if we go back to Voldemort's name, it's derived from French for flight or theft from death because he's always trying to cheat death. Rowling isn't the only creator that focused on the importance of names. In the early drafts of Star Wars, George Lucas had a character called Anakin Starkiller. Eventually, the hero's name became Luke Skywalker, which has a less menacing name and sound, and Luke means bringer of light in Greek, which is the language of origin. And that makes sense since he becomes a Jedi. But Lucas reused the name Anakin for Luke's father. No, I am your father. No! No! And Starkiller did come back around too, albeit in two ways. The first was in the 2007 video game, The Force Unleashed, in which you play as Starkiller, Vader's secret apprentice, by far the best reuse of the name. And then of course there's J.J. <sighs> Abrams and crew reinventing the wheel with episode seven and dubbing their bigger, badder Death Star, Starkiller Base, which I guess makes some sense because it drains stars and suns to power its planet-killing super laser. I mean, that's cool and all, but has anyone in the First Order ever ripped a Star Destroyer from the sky with just nothing but the force while being flanked by TIE Fighters? So the name you choose for your character is going to be unique for them and to them. So here are seven rules for picking your character's names. More what you call guidelines than actual rules. First is check out the root meanings or the etymology. How they wear that name is going to offer some insight for you into how they act, what they do, how they react and interact with other characters. The etymology, the meaning behind the name, is going to help give you, the author, that bit of focus. If you look at names from the Bible, no, not Lord of the Rings, the actual Bible, the names of people were entirely specific. Abraham means father of many, and he was the ancestor and patriarch of the nation of Israel. Jesus is derived from the name Joshua, which means the Lord saves. Also pay attention to surnames. Many surnames are derived from their language of origin as well because they were either a tradecraft in which the character was employed, like Smith or Taylor, or they meant the child of, like McGregor, or they represented a color closely associated with the character, I'm considering legendary Viking Eric the Red, or it was a reference to where they lived, like Sir Ulrich von Lichtenstein, which literally translates as from Lichtenstein. Second, get your era right. If you're writing a historical period piece, don't use names that are popular right now, and certainly don't make anything up. Look up names that were actually popular and in heavy use in that era. It might be neat to have your character named after your favorite celebrity, but it's not going to make any sense at all. Third, speak them out loud. At some point, you're going to want your book to be in audio or ebook formats, the latter usually having text to speech capacity. Even if the name you have selected looks good on paper, that may not translate into verbal speech so easily. 
don't believe me? Try saying rural juror five times fast. Before going any further with the video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications on new videos. You can select notifications for all videos, or you can select notifications based on your preferences. If you're watching on your phone, be sure to update those settings inside the app itself to get the most out of your viewing experience. Fourth, manage your crew appropriately. If you're writing a book with a large cast of characters, make sure you know who is whom. Also avoid giving characters the same name. Also, also, try to avoid giving characters the same initials unless it's an intentional red herring meant to hide something from the reader. Fifth, use alliterative names and initials. You see this a lot in comic books like Peter Parker, Scott Summers, Stephen Strange, Victor Von Doom, Reed Richards, Sue Storm, Clark Kent. Heck, even Tolkien did it with Bilbo Baggins. Alliterative names are easier to remember because they create a cadence for our minds that's easy to follow. Six, think it through. It's important to avoid directly naming characters after people that you know or people that are real. And the reason for that is because you have a less likelihood of getting sued for defamation. However, it is entirely possible that you might accidentally name a character after a real person. In fact, most works of fiction often include some kind of disclaimer in that regard. Case in point, if you ever watch Demolition Man from 1993, one of the names in the cryoprison registry is Scott Peterson. Those of you who may have paid attention to the news back in the mid-2000s might remember that name as belonging to a guy who killed his wife. Ironically enough, I actually knew a guy from high school with the same name, but he and the murderer are not the same person. Sometimes life is stranger than fiction. Lastly, check out the names again. Just because the name sounds good to you doesn't mean it's going to work in a book. This is especially important if you are writing about a particular culture or time period. If you're writing about a Japanese American, don't use the surname Kwan, which is Chinese. Now, if you want to find this list without having to go back through the video, the link for this article, which is found on writersdigest.com, can be found down in the video description. If you need a resource for finding names and meanings, check out behindthename.com. It's an etymology website. I'll have that available for you too. Glad you made it to the end of the video. Please make sure to like and share this video because that is how this channel is going to be able to grow its viewership. If you're able to do so, please consider becoming a supporter over at patreon.com slash GKJ Publishing where you'll have a choice from one of four support tiers. Each tier comes with monthly access to a bloopers reel from when I record my vlogs, sweet tier level perks, and you'll receive recognition in the final video of each month. Check out the merch store at teespring.com slash stores slash GKJ Publishing where you can find comfy clothing, hats, phone cases, a mug, and posters. Buy the merch, snap a pic, and post it to social media with the hashtag 5 Kingdoms Merch, and I'll feature it in a video. Speaking of posters, don't forget to sign up for the free giveaway. When I hit 200 YouTube subscribers, I'll announce a winner. I'll see you guys back here next week for the Authors Showcase, featuring the names and promotional images for the authors that I'm going to be interviewing for Author Awareness August. Thanks for watching. The vlog of the Five Kingdoms is filmed without the use of a live audience at Skyrocket Studios in Hanford, California. We can't do what we do without your help, so please make sure to subscribe by clicking the button that's above my head, and make sure to watch and share the videos over here to my left. Have a great week.